The Holy Spirit is hovering across this audience and he is working to prepare you to receive new life. You cannot imagine a day without drugs. Some of you, we have gone out of our way to make sure you would be here tonight from the streets and from areas, some of the homeless, some of the people victimized by modern life. We went out of our way to bring you in this tent. And right now you cannot imagine a day where you have your own home or a day where you're not on drugs or a day where you don't want to kill yourself. But what you'll become by the end of this night will be so opposite what you're used to. You will look in the mirror and you will not recognize yourself. I want you to listen to me, look at me. One day we did an outreach at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles. And with the help of Victory Outreach, we had a massive turnout. Sonny Argonzoni himself said, we're going to help Mario. And we got members of every major gang. I was sitting in, the, in my dressing room of the shrine with 7,000 people and thousands of them were unsaved. And the LAPD broke into my dressing room and said, are you crazy? And I said, well, you know, it's common knowledge by now. It's not a secret. They said, do you realize what kind of violence could break out out there? I said, have you seen the ushers from Victory Outreach? Have you seen them? I said, there ain't nothing gonna break out here. They'd be crazy. And I, so I went out, we gave the altar call and a thousand young people came forward. Now watch. When I looked down at them, I was looking at the young ladies that came down. And I looked at them and I thought they were like 25, 30 years old. Then I said, close your eyes, receive Jesus. And when they opened their eyes, I realized they were 14 and 15 years old. And Christ had changed their countenance in one prayer. And they went back to looking innocent. Tonight I'm telling you, God's gonna change people. How many of you know the greatest news in the world is that tonight drugs and sin and perversion cannot survive the love of God. Is that the news? Yeah. Man, am I excited. When I was converted to Christianity, it was so total and so instant that within 14 days of my conversion, I had won 14 of my classmates to Christ. I made God a vow that I would win a soul every day. That's it. And it didn't matter to me what you thought, what you believed. If you sat next to me in science, that's your problem. If you're, if you're in the locker room and your locker's next to mine, that's your problem. Because I'm going to tell you about he who changed me, altered me, and made me a child of God. But then one day, not long after I was converted, I found out I was going to be a preacher. God called me. And what I didn't know, because my mom was backslidden, and when I came home from church in the inner city, and my mom, Christina, was in the kitchen, I walked up to her about 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday night. I said, Mom, I have been saved. And when I said the word saved, my mom collapsed to her knees and began sobbing and said, Jesus, forgive me. I'm going to serve you now with all my might. And you know what? To her dying day, she did. She lived to be 92 and she served God. But here's, here's what you need to know. 
My father left our family on the day I was born. He didn't want to be a father. He was too young. My mom had already had one child and she was working in the sweatshops in San Francisco. And that time it was 10 cents an hour. So she's a, she's a, she had me when she was 19 years old. And here she was living in poverty with her mom, my grandmother, and she'd already had my older brother. A year later, she had me. Doctor said while she was pregnant, you're too poor to have this child. I know some back alley place you can go to end this, terminate this pregnancy. She walked home trying to figure out how to live her life. And instead of aborting me, she put the Bible on her belly every night. And she said for nine months, every night, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, but they are going to preach the gospel. And I'm having this child. Is that a story right there? Come on, you can clap better than that. <laughs> Jesus feels your heart. You know when the politician says he feels your pain, he's lying. You know when Dr. Phil says he feels for you, that's nothing. The bottomless, limitless, undeniable passion that God weeps when you weep. God has wept over your life. When you didn't know it and you didn't feel it, Christ was there saying, if only you would have let me in, I would have stopped that tragedy. I would have ended your pain. I remember when I was saved. I remember when I was saved. I'm telling you that I remember the very moment that it was approximately 8.59, almost 9 o'clock on a Sunday night on October the 4th. And I felt that somebody who would never leave me, never lie to me, never reject me, never abandon me, had come into my life. And I had discovered the greatest truth of the entire universe. That the one who loves me the most is also the one who has the most power in the universe. And I thought, how wonderful is that? The one who loves me the most has the most power. No devil. No sickness, no tragedy, no hatred, no darkness, no vileness, no devil in hell can separate me from the love of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me preach tonight.